Hi, I'm your host, Didi Che. Audio Builders TV presents Why Guitar Players Should Care About Electronics. This is a multi-part series presented by John Snyder. John is a PhD student at Boston University and is the owner and chief engineer of Electronic Audio Experiments, a small batch manufacturer of stomp boxes and tube amps. Audio Builders TV is produced by the students of Concord Carlisle High School with help from Colonial Sound and CCTV. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and sign up for our mailing list at audiobuildersworkshop.com. <laughs> Audio Builders. Hi everyone, I'm John Snyder from Electronic Audio Experiments and uh, I'm going to be talking about the things that make guitar playing more worthwhile from an electronic standpoint. Uh, so last time I talked a little bit about op amps and I said that op amps are found pretty much in every single guitar pedal. Uh, here is going to be an example of a very classic guitar circuit that uses an op amp in a very important way. Uh, so this classic pedal is the MXR Distortion Plus. Uh, you'll sometimes see it as the DoD 250 and the Ross Distortion. Um, and it's got the same basic idea. It takes an op amp and then it distorts the crap out of whatever comes out of it. Uh, this was designed in the 1970s, but you can still walk into his store and pick one up today. So what is the anatomy of a classic distortion pedal? Uh, here we've got a whole bunch of components. Um, where the signal comes in on the left is a filter, and that filter is just going to get rid of some unwanted stuff from your guitar signal. Um, and it's going to get rid of things like uh, popping and RF noise and all that stuff that just isn't very helpful. Um, this filter is formed from resistors and capacitors. We haven't talked about capacitors much, uh, but capacitors are essentially a device which has an impedance or resistance which depends on frequency. And so you can make filters out of those to pick and choose what frequencies you want to keep and which ones you want to throw away. Once the signal goes out of the input filter, it goes to an op amp gain stage. And that op amp gain stage is doing what we talked about last time, uh, where it takes the input signal and it multiplies it by some factor depending on the resistors that are around the op amp. In this case, this is a non-inverting amplifier, and the gain is going to be 1 plus uh, the feedback resistor divided by the resistor going to ground, or the shunt resistor. Now we have a gain control at the bottom of the schematic, and that gain control is the shunt resistor. And what's happening is as you, as you turn the knob up, that resistor gets smaller and smaller. So the feedback resistor divided by the shunt resistor, that's going to get bigger and bigger, and that increases your gain. So that op amp, all it's doing is amplifying the signal. Up at the top, we have the power supply. And the power supply's job is simple. Take what's coming in, make sure there's no noise, and give the op amp the voltages that it wants to work correctly. Now finally, at the end, we've got something that we haven't seen before. Uh, these are what we call clipping diodes. I'm gonna talk about those a little more in the next slide, but that's what gives the distortion its rough, edgy character that we know so well for electric guitar. And then at the very output, you have a volume control, which is a voltage divider, like we talked about before. So now, what is a diode? Uh, diodes are the one-way valve of the electronics world. On the left, you can see an example of a glass body diode, and on the right, you can see this arrow-shaped schematic symbol that you see uh, to represent a diode. A diode has what we call an anode and a cathode, a positive and negative terminal. Current can only flow from the anode to the cathode. But the relationship isn't like Ohm's law, where it's just V equals IR and it's a constant. In fact, uh, diodes have a very unique curve, uh, what we call an IV curve. When the voltage is positive, when the anode is at a higher voltage than the cathode, current is going to flow, and then it's just going to keep on trying to flow until there isn't any more. And so essentially it just stops at some voltage, and we call this the forward voltage of the diode. When you try to apply voltage backwards across the diode, nothing happens until you get to a really big voltage, like 50 or so. The forward voltage of the diode is going to depend on what it's made out of. Silicon germanium, uh, silicon, germanium LEDs are all going to have different forward voltages. So now, how do we use these in guitar circuits? Now, if you take just a regular signal, let's say it's a sine wave, it just goes up and down. This is what you can think of as a pure tone. And now let's put one diode there, just going straight to ground or zero volts from your signal. It's going to actually chop off the top of that, and that the voltage is going to be clipped uh, at the point which is the forward voltage of the diode. And this clipping is what, is what we hear, uh, you know, our human ears perceive as distortion. Um, so for picture number two here, 
This is what we call an asymmetrical or single-sided clipping. So if you just have one diode to ground, you're only gonna cut off the top of the waveform, but not the bottom. If you add another diode back to back with this one, you'll cut off both sides. And this is what you see most commonly in distortion circuits. You'll find this in the Distortion Plus, you'll find this in the Proco Rat, you'll find a form of this in the Ibanez Tube Screamer, and literally hundreds of others use something kind of like this. Um, you can get really crazy and you can mix and match different diodes in order to get something more complicated, uh, like in picture four here, where two diodes are on one side and one is on the other, and one side clips a little bit more suddenly than the other. The human ear will notice different harmonic content based on what's happening. So as you can see, diodes are really the heart and soul of these circuits and all sorts of cool stuff is going to happen with them. And uh, that's all for today. Thanks for watching Audio Builders Television. My name is John Snyder.